Hey there, this is Dr. Corey Gilbert with the Healthy Marriage Inner Circle and the Warrior Marriage Podcast. Um, join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash The Healthy Marriage, free Facebook group. Talk about tons of stuff, have tons of content for you to learn from, and would love to bless you and, and hopefully see your marriage and your family transformed. Today we're going to look at Scott Stanley's research from his book, The Heart of Commitment. It's compelling research that reveals the secrets of a lifelong intimate marriage. This is one that really impacted me about 15, 20 years ago um, that uh, I'd love to share with you, something that I use in one of my um, undergraduate classes I teach. So here it is, one of them, joint choices and the path of commitment, making the choice to give up choices, the threat of um, attractive alternatives and grieving over losses that come with commitment. These are really important principles. Making the choice to give up choices. You have choice. You can stay in your marriage. You can leave your marriage. You can have an affair. You can go outside. You can just quit. You can just stop. Um, you have choice. And so a critical choice that you and I must make is making the choice to give up choices. I'm surrendering that for you. And then that's that second one there, the threat of attractive alternatives. The truth is, is there's always that Proverbs 6, 7 temptress, if you will, for men and women that we can actually surrender to them or be very, very weary of and be able to keep ourselves far, far away from. If you go to YouTube.com and actually look up me, it's uh, YouTube.com slash Healing Lives. I got tons of video and I have a sermon that I did on um, how to have an affair. I check it out. Um, it's something to to listen to and think through. And it's basically, there are multiple steps before an affair, before adultery happens. So let's not wait till like we're six or steps, seven steps in to stop something. Instead, let's actually catch it way before so we can avoid going near that cliff. And that's a really important thing. And then this next one, grieving over losses that come with commitment. Every single commitment we make, we are saying no to other things and other, other people. Every job I take, I'm saying no to another job. If I marry you, if I'm married to you, I gave up other it's that attractive alternatives, it's choices. But grieving is actually a critical thing. I don't believe as Christians we've actually learned many times how to grieve well. And we need to actually learn to grieve which is the Kubler-Ross grief process, going through anger and, and depression and bargaining. And we go through this, sometimes we get stuck in it and we're just kind of going back and forth in it. Really, we're trying to almost like make a case for why we should choose different versus go through that, grieve the loss and then let go, be able to get to acceptance and truly be on the other side where I'm actually going back to that first one. I am choosing to give up choices. And I'm choosing to look at attractive alternatives and actually almost laugh and saying no and walking away. When I realize that I actually am in control of this, it is really freeing. It's also really scary to realize I can choose to mess this whole thing up. So be really intentional at making this a conscious choice, not something that you're just doing unconsciously, um, that you're actually protecting your marriage. Another one is developing and maintaining the long-term view. So investing for the long haul and a lasting vision, a vision to last. You and I need a big, big picture plan. So as a husband and as a wife, as a couple, as a family, you need to plan financially. You need to plan with jobs. You need to plan with retirement. You need to plan with as kids get older and even the financial piece of that and how you're going to handle college or other stuff like that. Investing for the long haul. When there's a dream and a vision, you tend to be able to handle the long haul. It's when we, we're in survival mode and just kind of handling just today, it tends to be because of the busyness and because of the chaos of just lives that are way too full and tend to be quite unhealthy. So you need to develop and maintain the long-term view. And then this uh, last one here is fostering weeness and containing meanness. I like that. Oneness and teamwork is critical. So we need to encourage the us and the things we do together, even if we have different interests, and then containing the meanness, sac me meanness <laughs> sacrifice and service. Like my wife does not like concerts and things like that. And when we first got married, I actually bought tickets to the Dallas, Texas Symphony Orchestra. And I was so excited to have this amazing woman to go to the, to dress up nice with and go to the concert with. And after about two or three, she's like, 
I can't stand these. They're just, they're all, they all sound the same. I'm like, oh my gosh, who did I marry? Oh goodness. Um, sold the tickets. Remember, I, I even went to a Wynton Marsalis concert. Oh, it was the most beautiful uh, performance. And she just sat there like, okay, it all sounds the same. We like different things. So years later, she actually bought me tickets to the Blue Man Group, which was actually a really a different kind of experience. And um, we went and she brought a book to read. And I'm like, how weird. This is going to be such a cool. At the end, she actually was like, I actually never picked up the book. She she didn't. She enjoyed the the performance and it was kind of cheesy and it was kind of cool and um, it was a fun adventure together. Um, and then at some point, she actually bought tickets to the, to Wicked, um, the the musical. And it was incredible, and she learned to really enjoy that too because it's more of a story, which is her her a place that she enjoys. Um, we all like different things. Well, years ago, we would ride motor, our motor, my motorcycle together. We she'd ride with me, and she didn't love it. She just loved that I loved it and loved doing stuff with me, and we do stuff together as a couple. Um, that's that's what we do as a couple. That's that oneness and teamwork as we create and do things to foster the we-ness and then contain the me-ness. I don't go on, like, I don't do stuff with my motorcycle where I'm gone all the time. Why? Because I value our us time and our family time, and I'm at work the other time, so I don't do that. That's my own choice. I used to love to play golf. I don't play golf anymore right now. I look forward to doing more of that coming up, but that's not something I do. Um until my kids can maybe join me because that's a lot of hours away and it's expensive and you sacrifice yourself or things you want to do for the sake of the bigger picture of us this is really important for all of us to think about um, in terms of developing a marriage that we actually protect that allows them to be the best them and us to be the best us and to develop the, the the relationship between and then also as we raise up our children in the way that they should go as they hopefully are desiring to follow God, that they're desiring to honor Him, and that they're an example to others, and they're actually um, young men and young women that actually have sexual integrity, that they actually can make wise choices. They don't think they have to date when they are 15 or 16 and can actually be wise in those decisions. So I hope this is encouraging and challenging you to think through some few things about your marriage. Um, for some great research from Scott Stanley. Um, bless you and your marriage. And if you have questions, check me out at healinglives.com um, or you can even book a marriage breakthrough uh, session at drcorey.org and would love to talk to you and see how I can serve you better. Bless you and your marriage.